Welcome, folks. This is Mark Steiner right here on The Mark Steiner Show on The Real News Network. And we continue our conversation with Paul Coates, uh, who is founder of Black Classic Press. And this is their 40th anniversary. It's a huge piece of what they brought to us in the world, what they've retrieved, and also how they built this business, which we're going to explore as well during this segment with Paul Coates, who she said earlier, back in their late 60s, early 70s, after Vietnam, was defense captain for the Black Panther Party in Baltimore and built an entire world for all of us to wrap our hands around since then. And Paul, picking up. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so how many titles do you think you've unearthed in Black Classic Press? I, I, don't, I don't know about unearthed, uh, Mark. Probably unearthed, really, really unearthed. Probably very few, okay? Because as, as I was saying earlier, most of the books, most of the books that I became aware of and that I ended up republishing, they were brought to me or I was told about those books by people in jail. You know, or I found them by going through bibliographies. So these books were known. It wasn't so much that I unearthed them, so much that I extended the life of those books. That's what I prefer to think about okay. it as, right. you right. know, as opposed right. to being a discoverer. I extended the life of them. Now, if we look at it like that, extending the life of them, we probably have a constant number, probably about 125 titles on our list, which I would consider to be a very, very small list. I, I, Mark, I want before I give my last breath. <laughs> I really, I really have a goal of publishing at least two thousand titles. I don't seem to get there because I get distracted on other things, um, and you know other reasons. But but th there's a vast wealth of information available that in my eyes should be reprinted. It doesn't mean that it will be commercially successful <laughs> if people reprint it. But that was never them. your intent with Black Classic <laughs> it's Press. It's not my intent, and it and still is not my intent. It still is not my intent. You know, our our publishing lives because in uh, 20 years ago we founded, 22 years ago we founded a printing company, which was the other part of the, the vision of George Jackson. That's BCP Digital. That's BCP Digital Printing, yes. So that was the, actually the third part of that vision. Now, when we were having the vision, I had no money, <laughs> no idea how this was going to happen. So, so when it happened, Mark, it wasn't like it was all planned out in finance. When it happened, one day it occurred to me, I said, oh, that's why we have the printing company. And the printing company showed up, you know, because in the early 70s, when we were thinking about a printing company, a company that printed books, you needed millions and millions of dollars. Gigantic machines. Gigantic and... machines. Whew, Mark, <laughs> you know, but by the time of 1996, when we got to 1996, mm -hmm. equipment had shrunk down. And so literally being able to print books was a matter of, of really tapping into the resources that you needed. And you could put a, put a machine almost anywhere at that point and you could begin to print books and that's what we did. But you started a business. Yes. That A supported Black Classic Press. Mark, it was, right. it was a movement. It was a movement, and that's what. Uh, see, w no, let me let me correct it, Mark. What you're saying is correct. I started a business, and I didn't understand it. I thought it was a movement, <laughs> and it took me honestly, Mark. It took me 15 years to understand that we were in business. Right. And so we made all the. Which you did pretty well for not knowing what you were doing. No, Mark. We we we, we, we did a tremendous we did a tremendous amount of bad, like not paying taxes and all the rest of that. that that would continue to haunt me for 25 years, Mark. Because we thought we were a community program, and I had no commitment whatsoever, none, to pay taxes. <laughs> let, me, let me just tell you something, Mark. I know you know this already. Pay your taxes. Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't care whether you think you're a Somebody, movement. Tell me I tell my children, pay your taxes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care whether you think you're a movement, whether you think you're a business. Go on, just pay the taxes, man, and get it done with. Because I didn't understand that, Mark. But go back to your point. So, so, so I started a business. Yeah, OK. But, you, <laughs> but despite your starting a movement, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Acting like a business. Yeah, movement slash. 
you did build a business that That's became correct. a serious business, printing for major corporations. That's correct. You know, I mean, doing and, and bringing it and became a family business That's that your correct. children came into, mm -hmm. hiring people in the community to work in that business. Black mm -hmm. folks who wouldn't have the jobs otherwise. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's significant. So it, it is, Mark, and I, I should make a distinction. Um, you know, the Black Classic Press part, because we have Black Classic Press and then BCP Digital right. uh, Printing. And I was telling you, Black Classic Press exists because of BCP Digital Printing. So that part, like, like we actually, even though it's one business, we look at them as two businesses. So the folks who operate Black Classic Press are generally, and never have been my family, except for when I was married and um, my then wife, Cheryl, was a part of the business. So even today, that business exists as a mission. It still does. And as a mission, the people who operate that business will probably be the ones that that business transitions to uh, after I leave, okay, after I leave the company and what have you. We're working on that now. The printing part of the business is a business. And, and so there are members of my family there that work in it. I think, that's, I think it's important to, to make that as a distinction. Because, you know, what I've come to understand, Mark, it's not good that we, it's not a, 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 it's okay. And it's kind of important if we do good in our lifetime. But, Mark, you know, our job on the planet should be trying to ensure that good is done after we leave. Right. You right. know, that's right. why we raise our children, right? right? You know, and if we create an institution, if we create an institution, uh, to look for that institution to survive in our lifetime is short-sighted if we don't look for it to survive beyond us. And in that sense, Black Classic Press, we're already working on how the, the publishing part, that mission, really mission part, survives beyond us. And it won't necessarily be with the printing part in, uh, so they as a part of it. They may separate, you mean? They, they, that's the way we're looking at it now. Interesting. Yes, that's the way we're looking at it now. Well, so couple, there already is a designated successor for that. A, a couple of things, though. I mean, one of the things you did with your business, which I think is important to talk about before we come back to the Black Classic Press and the celebration coming up this month in Baltimore for Black Classic Press, is that you have a business that employs people. You're a small businessman, but you wanted and encouraged a union in your own business. Now, I think it's really important to talk about this for a minute because that is you living by your principles, what you believe is right in terms of society and people's and working class people in this country. I mean, to do that, I think, is almost an anomaly for most small businesses. Yeah, my, my my work experience, uh, what little work I did <laughs> before before starting a movement slash business, <laughs> and before being captured by the Panthers, um, that work was done in as, as a union member, and I, I've always um, uh, been aware of union history and admired union history from the sense of it seeming reasonable to establish a basis of cooperative work. You know, it's, it's a beginning point for cooperative work. And so when we set up the printing company, almost immediately um, I looked for how that could be done. I looked for a model of how that could be done. And I was encouraged in, in this city by people like Bob Moore, 1199E, oh. Fred Mason, AFL-CIO, he was with 1199E. Right. E. And they were able to help support us and steer us um, toward the union, the uh, communication workers of America that we're a part of uh, at this point. They were able to guide me along that path. I should say, mentioning Fred Mason's name, yeah. that Fred was one of those six people. He was an ex. <laughs> I don't even know what he was an ex or whatever he was. But, but he's always had labor at his heart. He's always had labor at his heart. He's always had working class people at his heart. Right. And that's what he worked in for the, you know, for the rest of his life and continues to work in. But to me, that's also what you're building as a movement with Black Classic Press and bringing to a larger world works that people didn't know existed. Most people did not know existed. 
that explain who we are as human beings, what black folks did, really did, what black folks wrote about, what Africa was about from the 19th and 18th century. I mean, this is really important mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. You marry that with building a business mm -hmm. where you as a small business person allow a union to be part of the, the founding of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I think, a model that people need to really th wrestle with. Mm -hmm. Because it, co it comes to me, it comes out of your being a working class kid. It comes out of your being, um, for want of a better term at the moment, an African revolutionary thinker. Mm -hmm. uh, your experience in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I mean, all that coming together to create something that is really unique. Mm -hmm. You don't, I mean, this story is a really unique story, I think. Thank you, Mark. Living it, I don't feel it all that. <laughs> 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 no, but, uh, but it's, it's been a, uh, here, here, here's what I feel. I feel that everything, in it, and I, I'm, I'm glad to have the opportunity to get this in, right? Because I think it all comes down to this. I feel that everything I've been a part of and everything I've ever been able to accomplish has been done uh, because I was supported to do it, okay? I was supported to do it. I was guided to do it. Uh, in cooperation, I was allowed to do it. You know, I think about Black Classic Press, and and uh, you, you know, I'm married. I have, I have a total of um, seven biological children. And at one point, I married the mother of the the writer who became Tanahasi Coates. Okay, I married her. Well. My existence as a father, my existence at Black Classic Press, all that is made possible because she was able to support me. You see? Because she was able to support me. The, the children that I had before her, it was because the mothers and fathers of the mothers supported me. Those people knew me in the Panther Party. And when I went to... Um, set up Black Classic Press, when I went to set up the George Jackson prison movement, they were some of my strongest supporters. You know, they didn't run me to court. Because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have child support. They didn't run me to court. What they did was give me their support and say that they were going to take care of the children. But what's important is, let me point something out here mm -hmm. as you're saying this, because people can misconstrue things mm -hmm. before we come back to Black Classic mm -hmm. Press. You may not have been in this classic term of writing a check for child support, yeah. but one of the things that Paul Coates did was stayed in his children's lives until they of course. To, to reached into to, to man and womanhood. Of course, you were there all the time for those of children. Of course, I mean, and 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 that is important too, Mark. Because we think of in this world, that everything no. has, if, you, if you're not paying a check for five hundred dollars a month and you're not being a father, no. I mean, that's no. not what you were no. saying. And and of course, I worked to to do support. Yeah, but I, mean, I guess I guess yeah, what yeah. what impresses on me is there were times I knew I didn't have money. And I knew that those grandparents gave me value anyway, you know, because they appreciated me <laughs> in the community <laughs> and they encouraged me to be in the community doing what I was doing. They saw value in what I was doing and they saw value in my relationship. I always, anyone that ever knew me and you'll see pictures of me all the time, my children are always, oh. always with me. Right. Always with me, always, always with me. And so it was important to build family. It was important to engage with community. It was important to have the help of, of those grandparents, those parents. And I, and I, I Mark, so, so we're doing that celebration of 40 years. Get this, that celebration is actually a celebration of gratitude. It's, it's an a opportunity to be thankful for all of the people who showed up. You, you know, like, like you have a vision, you want to do something, and that's all you need and going out the door, and that's all you got, <laughs> but people show up to help you. And that's what 40 years have been for me. I don't, I don't care. Other people may say, well, black folks don't do this, white folks don't do that. I've been helped all the way. I've had a great 40-year run, you know, a great 40-year run because people have helped me every step of the way, Mark. So you, we, we skimmed across a name here I want to come back to, <clears throat> uh, Walter Mosley. Mm -hmm. You've had a relationship as a friend for a long time. Yes. Uh, one of America's great writers, yes. thinkers. Who I've enjoyed interviewing over the years. Yes. Um, and, but you publish a certain amount of books that he writes, right? 
No, well, we, we, we've published a couple of books. We've published a couple of books with Walter. Walter and I had this, um, Laura Lipman wrote an article in the Sun about Walter and I and talks about us being, because Walter described us as being two coyotes who, who, <laughs> who go down the road together and if we see something we want, we say, we'll go over and do this. Let's, let's go over there and get that. And then uh, other times we said, you go over and get that. You know? <laughs> so it's no way that I could afford to support Walter as the writer he is, a world-class writer. He has the opportunity to make, at times, millions of dollars with, with his writing, and he should do that, and we agreed very, very early on. And at the, at the same time, there would be works at times that he would not want to take to a major publisher or that didn't fit a major publisher, and those works would be available through the Black Classic Press. And we serve together in that capacity. Um, we're also, which will be announced at the 40th, we're also, any of his works that go out of print, they come to Black Classic Press. So that's a part of our mission <laughs> anyway. And um, we, we, we have that kind of relationship. So this 40th anniversary, just let me talk about that before we come back to Black, Black Classic Press and mm -hmm. conclude, um, it's almost a week, end long celebration you're having, right? It is, we're, we're, we're like a Friday, Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, yeah. We're gonna do an open house on Sunday, we're gonna bring people in, have them make books in the, in uh, free labor. They will not have to be union workers. <laughs> <laughs> do not expect to be paid if you come yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, they're not like getting paid. <laughs> but, but we wanna be able to have people go through some hands-on demonstrations about how books are made and to have that kind of resource available in the black community is a, uh, I mean, a tremendous thing that most folks don't even think of. You got a, you got a manufacturing company that you can walk into and make these books. So we're going to do that. Saturday, we're going to um, do a book fair and we're going to have panel sessions during the day. And that, that evening, we'll have this gala in which people are coming in from all over. We have a number of authors coming in and people who also will thank us and we're going to thank them. And then on Friday, we're doing a welcome reception, which, which is going to welcome people into uh, Baltimore and thank them again for helping support us. Now, of all this, look, so we're going to do all that. We're going to have all that fun and we're going to raise membership for, for the Reginald F. Lewis Museum. That's one of the goals and one of the uh, uh, outcomes of this. Mm -hmm. We want to raise membership and we want to raise money for the museum. It's no point in being uh, grateful if you can't give some of that gratitude back to people. And that's what we're going to do, Mark. So uh, I think it's important to say Black Classic Press after 40 years, on the things you publish and put out, really is born of your social, political, community philosophy about who we should be as human beings. Mm. It's also born of, for want of a better term, your Africanness, mm -hmm. your understanding of what it means to be descended from Africa and what that means in terms of community and what you owe back mm -hmm. and what's been and, and, and your relationship with other people. I mean that complexity is in there. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for people to understand that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah Mark, I, yes, yes. Let me just say yes it because you said it better than I could say it. <laughs> yeah, it's got all of that, it's got all that stuff up in it, man. <laughs> all of that works. <laughs> So, any, any little things you're going to lay out here about what's going to happen, what's, what's coming out next? You have new books you're about to give us? We, we, we have new books, but you know, I, Mark, we, we're working on a number of books, and new for me is old. Okay, right. a, exactly. lot of time, a lot of times right. it's old, right. you know? but we do have some new books also. One of the things we, we started a few years ago through declaration, and that is declaring what, is, what, what we want to be, we started. Uh, publishing books in the sphere of black st studies. And so our goal is to be a press that is the dominant press in providing books on the black experience, the black studies program. So, so we, we've got a couple of books coming through there, some on some local activists out of DC. We have some books that are coming on hip hop and some other things. So we're, we're actually looking ahead and at the same time, Mark, I'm, I'm going to do this here with you, okay? I don't know how much time we got, but Go I'm going to do it, okay? okay. Look, so I, I started by telling you that we started as a prison program. I started by, I told you that we started by getting books into the jail right. and how that didn't work because people use it as a commodity. So I'm going to tell you here, 
we've set up a new press in the very early stages and it's called New Mission Press. New Mission Press actually, and it won't be under my leadership, it'll be under someone's leadership who worked with me. Um, New Mission Press, what we're going to do is publish books specifically for the jails, specifically for the jails. And those books will be published at a discount, you know, at a discounted rate. Um, some people still won't have the money to buy them, but, but they'll be able to exchange them <laughs> in the jail. So that's okay too, because that's what those books are gonna be for. And we expect that we're gonna be able to grab a world experience. It'll start with black books, but we have the capacity to do um, uh, Latino books. We have the capacity to do general American history books. We're gonna have a major effort, Mark, over the, and it'll be rolled out shortly, and, but expanded over the next few years. That's what's really ahead uh, for That's the exciting. press. So it's not, we're not going back to the old mission. Yeah, right. It's actually a new mission. 21st century And it still update. is about using the power the brain power that's in those jails incarcerated in hell, the white brain power, the black brain power, it's about, it's gonna be about educating people. Brother Paul Coates, it's a pleasure to have you here in the studio with us. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Congratulations on all this, man. The 40th Thank anniversary, you. well deserved, all these accolades and more. Thank you. We've been sitting here with Paul Coates and Black Classic Press, what's the, what's the email, what's the uh, website? Uh, the website is blackclassicbooks.com, blackclassicbooks.com. Make sure you go there. Mm -hmm. I've been here with Paul Coates. I'm Mark Steiner for The Real News Network. Thank you so much. Talk to you all next week.